During the 20th century, anthropologists believed that Homo erectus had lived over the wide terrain of eastern Asia from the early Pleistocene, followed by the advent of a more sophisticated, but still primitive, groups in China during the mid-middle Pleistocene. However, recent finds or re-identifications of other archaic hominins, including Homo floresiensis from an Indonesian island, Neanderthals and Denisovans from southern Siberia, and an extraordinarily robust mandible from Taiwan all provide new insights. This new research seeks to present a phylogenetic model of different ancient Asian hominins dispersed from southern Siberia to Southeast Asia and India by including these most recent discoveries. In this video, we show how these paleoanthropological facts inform the taxonomic identity of Denisovans, and the admixture event with modern humans using this new paradigm. The question has even been proposed, are Denisovans and modern humans descended from the Javanese Homo erectus? At 800,000 years old, the Sangiran skull from Java raises the intriguing possibility that Homo erectus reversed its migration and returned to East Africa. Reverse migrations from Asia to Africa are not logically expected, but nonetheless could have happened. Although the historical geographic range of Java Homo erectus is unknown, it is entirely probable that it was ubiquitous throughout the Sunda region. Because of this, the lineage has been called Sunda Homo erectus. If so, the Australo-Melanesian ancestors must have encountered them during their migration, which could have led to introgression of their genes. However, the discrepancy with the reported divergence time between the Siberian Denisovans and modern humans may not be a problem, if the former was an admixed population between the local primitive hominins and Neanderthals as discussed previously. The divergence time between Javanese Homo erectus and Homo sapiens is likely much older than 1.2 million years ago. As previously observed by proponents of the multi-regional hypothesis of modern human origins, if this Homo erectus group was the source of the Denisovan DNA recovered from Oceania, this event would explain some skull characteristics similar to those of Homo erectus in fossil and extant Aboriginal Australians. The subsequent spread of later populations, and ensuing genetic overprinting can be used to explain the lack of Denisovan DNA in the current populations of Sunda, including Indonesia. Even though the fossil record for Asia is currently quite limited, it is always beneficial to carefully consider what we can and cannot infer from the materials at hand. Thus, the concept that Javanese Homo erectus is the southern Denisovans is plausible and merits more research. Of course, it's also possible that the southern Denisovans' fossils have not yet been found, or are still unidentified in existing fossil collections. Before we draw this conclusion, however, it is necessary to examine other potential circumstances more closely. The Middle Awash Valley in Ethiopia is where the fossilized hominid known as Bodo Man was found. To comprehend the origins of our species, Homo sapiens, Bodo and Herto Man are essential fossils. These ancient people may have been distant cousins of the Herto modern human populations that lived in the same region. The 600,000 year old skull, known as Bodo Man, is one of the earliest ancient remains that we may regard as being closer to Homo sapiens, and is most likely an ancestor of the modern human populations that first appeared in East Africa 200,000 years ago. Bodo man exhibits archaic traits that truly show a split between Homo ergaster erectus and Homo sapiens. The glabella interrupts the extremely thick, double-arched supraorbital torus. Throughout the fossil record, it has the widest nasal opening below the nasal bones, a projecting and broad middle face. Finally, the morphological continuity that the African Bodo Carbway Herto specimens demonstrate over time is astounding. For instance, the change to a lighter supraorbital torus, although maintaining a double arch, and the appearance of more contemporary zygomatics. The Carbway skull from Zambia and the Bodo skull, according to Spanish anthropologist Roberto says, also share features with Asian specimens of Homo erectus, such as the Sangaran 17 skull from Java, Indonesia. These features include broad zygomatics, thick supraorbital torus, long and sloping forehead, sagittal keel and broad nasal aperture. Russian researchers had been aware of Denisova cave in the Altai region of Siberia for some 40 years, but it wasn't until the location received widespread notice thanks to the publishing of a particularly unusual mitochondrial. DNA sequence, named Lineage X, from a fragment of a human finger bone. According to the sequence, the Siberian Denisovans split off from the ancestors of modern humans and Neanderthals, less than one million years ago. In contrast, 
a draft of the whole genome from a finger bone was later published and suggested that the Denisovans were quite closely related to Neanderthals. It also revealed that portions of similar DNA were present in extant Melanesians, likely as a result of ancient introgression from a Denisovan-like population. The early analysis left many concerns about the Denisovans unsolved. Now, the latest research reveals that Denisovans inhabited the cave for a considerable amount of time, and that they had less genetic variety than living Europeans. Hence, it's possible that Denisovan and Neanderthal presence in the cave fluctuated, or had gaps over a long period of time before being replaced by modern human habitation. Remarkably, this cave is only 200 miles from China, opening the door to the possibility that Neanderthals traveled all the way to East Asia and mated with Asian archaic humans. Denisovan samples are hard to come by, though, so the chance to get fresh information is crucial even when samples aren't well preserved. The study connects two disciplines, paleoanthropology and ancient DNA that have been essentially constant sources of the remarkable in recent years. Since 2010, paleoanthropologists have been in an unanticipated situation. They are aware of a recent hominin group for which the only substantial source of knowledge has been the genome sequence. The Denisovan group offers one such example. Several concerns regarding the Denisovans remain unresolved despite in-depth analyses of ancient DNA and tooth morphology. How can the conflicting mitochondrial DNA and nuclear DNA signals regarding their link with Neanderthals be resolved, for instance? One theory is that more ancient mitochondrial DNA lineages were introduced, together with the identified archaic introgression into the Denisova nuclear genome. This was in addition to the detected archaic introgression from Neanderthals. Another possibility, however, is that the proto Neanderthal and Denisovan samples still have diversity in ancestral mitochondrial DNA lineages that were lost in later Neanderthal and modern human evolution. This idea is supported by the similarity of the Denisova mitochondrial DNA, to the mitochondrial DNAs recovered from the 400,000-year-old proto-Neanderthal fossils in Spain. Possibly, novel variants shared by contemporary humans, and Neanderthals within the last 400,000 years have even supplanted older mitochondrial DNA lineages in them. This is in keeping with their considerably more recent mitochondrial DNA coalescence dates. How the Denisovans fit into the larger narrative of human evolution over the past million years is a second, even more basic question. They belong to a larger Neanderthal lineage, as their nuclear DNA clearly supports, but their divergent mitochondrial DNA, and their primitive tooth morphology conflict with this classification. Larger fossil and DNA samples of the Denisovans, who are still only known from incomplete fossils at a single cave site, would be useful in this regard. Intriguing and unexpected are the latest discoveries of these Denisovans, and genetic proof of their hybridization with modern human groups is now found in island Southeast Asia, Australia, Papua New Guinea and Melanesia. The introduction of Denisovan genes into current humans is concentrated in Oceania. This indicates that the southern Denisovans, the introgressing ghost population, lived well south of the Altai Mountains in Siberia, and possibly even across the Wallace Line. Sunda is a lost landmass in island Southeast Asia, that was drowned by rising sea levels around 10,000 years ago. This landmass included Indonesia and Malaysia, and the seas that separate these regions including the Gulf of Thailand. Sol was the supercontinent of Australia, Tasmania, and Papua New Guinea before rising sea levels separated these three regions, leaving them separated. Thus, given that Denisovan-like individuals likely lived in an area from which we already have a reliable fossil record, which of the known fossil discoveries could genuinely be Denisovan ancestors? Although fossil samples exhibit significant morphological variability, None of the later archaic Chinese fossils or comparable material from Sunda or Sol have produced ancient DNA sequences to date. The mandibles of fossils from China, such as the Penghu mandible dredged from the sea near Taiwan and the other fossils, indicate that these two specimens are unlikely to represent the same species of human. Lineage X, the ghost population, seems to be as good a moniker as any for this mysterious human group, until more complete Denisovan material is retrieved or until additional ancient DNA that is Denisovan-like is isolated from other fossils in Asia or Oceania. Another theory that fits with this is that the Siberian Denisovan was not a legitimate taxonomic group, but rather a population of Neanderthals that had mated with a local primitive hominid. In other words, 
the reported presence of both the Denisovan and Neanderthal DNA in the same Denisova cave is attributed to individual genetic variation within the same population, rather than alternating occupations by different subspecies. Some of the group members inherited unmixed Neanderthal nuclear DNA while others did not, and the more ancient mitochondrial DNA identified for the Denisovans. In any case, the discussion suggests that the southern Denisovan may not be identical to the original Siberian Denisovan, and that the former may be represented in the known fossil samples from South or Southeast Asia.